We're going to go ahead and get started with our media availabilities in advance of tomorrow's sixth annual Lily Diabetes 250 from the NASCAR Xfinity Series. We're joined now by the managing director of the NASCAR Xfinity Series, Mr. Wayne Alt. Wayne, uh, as we were talking on the way over here, quite a bit of, uh, of anticipation for tomorrow's event uh, with the new rules package. Talk us through uh, what that package consists of, please. Yeah, the, um, first of all, thanks for uh, having me in here to uh, explain some of the changes that we've made to the uh, cars. Uh, we started out with uh, a test here last October uh, that went very well with uh, RCR racing, Roush racing, and uh, Collard racing. Uh, the drivers were Brandon Jones, uh, Ryan Reed, and uh, Blake Cook. So what we ended up with with the package of, uh, we went back to 2016 splitter, which is uh, sticking out the front of the car. It's not like we uh, run at other racetracks with the uh, lower downforce. We added a 7 8 restrictor plate to the cars, which took off about 225 horsepower uh, estimated from what we run at uh, other racetracks. And then we added the uh, big spoiler that we raced in 2016, which is 64 and 3 quarter inches wide, uh, 6 inches uh, tall with uh, 2 inch extendants on the uh, outside of the uh, cars. But I, I, I want to make I want to make this perfectly clear to everybody. We're talking about the NASCAR Xfinity Series here at Indianapolis. Uh, we did some extensive testing with sim work. We did a track test here last October uh, uh, before we went to uh, the next race with the three race teams that I uh, mentioned. And this is all about the NASCAR Xfinity Series here at Indianapolis, and I want to make that crystal clear. This this is for us, uh, for the NASCAR Xfinity Series here at Indianapolis, and we feel very, very confident that uh, with the test that we saw and the sim work that the teams have done, that this is going to be a great package for Indianapolis here tomorrow for the Lily Diabetes uh, 250. We'll go ahead and open it up to questions. If you raise your hand, we'll get a mic to you and state your name and affiliation, please. We'll go right here to Jim. <laughs> Let just me make myself dismiss, clear. <laughs> dismiss him. Just dismiss him. <laughs> Jim Motor, Motorsport.com. Hey, Jim. Of the items that you mentioned, the, the significant changes, which one or is there one that stands out among the others that you guys felt produced or is likely to produce the biggest difference? I, 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 one thing that I failed to mention there was we also added some arrow ducts to the cars, to the front end. Uh, which fit right in the same location that the teams use on the uh, noses of their cars, the lower half uh, where brake ducts go that they normally use. So probably that's the one big, uh, big item to the car that we added along with the uh, rear spoiler. It's a combination of all, all the aspects that we added to the car that made this package work. Uh, but if you want to uh, itemize it down to probably the one key area that uh, is very noticeable for the, any fans sitting in the stands or uh, anybody watching it out uh, in NBC this weekend, NBCSN, which a race will be on, or listening on the uh, radio Sirius XM. Uh, I, th I think probably the, what, the one thing that the fans are very noticeable to see is the arrow ducts we put in front of the car. And what those do, uh, it, it throws the air out and creates a wake, which uh, at Daytona, Talladega with, tell the teams you can't lock bumpers. We highly encourage it here at Indy this weekend. And with uh, the package that we were running, we felt like uh, with the test that we did, it evidence showed that that's very doable. So that, that's our goal is to get the cars to stay closer together. Uh, hopefully the passing comes along with it. And what we saw at the test, it definitely should create a lot of passing. But the arrow ducts is probably the, the one thing that if everybody walks through the garage area, you're going to really notice is a change to the cars. We'll go over here to uh, Jerry first and then to Reed. Jerry Jordan, kicking the tires on that hey, PRN. Um, I was going to ask you, on the track, were you guys race, were you, were you testing them in, in, in pack conditions? Or, or what did you see? What was the, the takeaway, the best takeaway from the package when you, when you actually got the cars up to speed in, in this test? OK. Uh, single car qualifying last year, we qualified at a 49.4. That was the pole speed here. Uh, single cars uh, here that we saw at Andy, we, we let the teams get some adjustments made to the package. Once we settled on which one we were going to do, they ran about 56 seconds. Uh, and then in a pack, it was about 54 seconds. 
So uh, the one thing that we did see, uh, we had the three cars running together once that they got their cars dialed in, is uh, about halfway down the front straightaway, we had two of the cars lock up and run the single car down and pass them with a slingshot here at the start finish line going into turn one. And then whenever they got to turn two, that third, the third car, the one that really got passed, they hooked back up and went around the car that was actually at the front again. So uh, we feel very confident that it's going gonna, it's gonna to create some excitement to the race tomorrow. We'll go to Reed. Uh, Reed, Reed Spencer. Hi, Wayne. Uh, with NASCAR Wire Service. Um, the, the bigger spoiler on the back, is that to balance the changes on the front? The, uh, the bigger spoiler, it, it gets the balance back in the car, but we also had to add the big splitter to the front end to keep that balance there. But what it does also, along with the aero ducts uh, making a big wake, the big spoiler will also make that wake, as, uh, as we've saw in years past with these cars. So uh, it, this combination of all the four ingredients that we have on the car that makes this whole package work, it's not one item that really outweighs the other. But the, the noticeable part is because the fans can really see that the aero ducts are in the car. You can't put any screen on them. You cannot absolutely do any obstructions in the ducts, and the ducts have to be in the car. The aero ducts have to be in the car at any time they're on a the racetrack unless there's not a nose there. Then obviously, I don't think we need to worry about it then anyway. But, uh, but definitely while you're on the racetrack, if, if you're on pit road, uh, and, and something goes through one of the aero ducts, you have the opportunity to patch it inside. Uh, or you can replace it. All of our officials on pit road will have a set of the aero ducts a left and a right so that if a team uh, has an issue with them, then they can change those. If it's only the damage to the aero ducts, they can change those without going on the DVP, the damage vehicle policy. So uh, that's what we've worked with the teams with, but we've been asked a ton of questions already today. Can I pop rivet one on if I knock one off? I have to put the bolts back in. We supplied the ducts to uh, the teams. We supplied the foam for the sealant, and we supplied it all the bolts. The teams had absolutely no cost into uh, putting these parts and pieces on the car. They had the rear spoilers from last year. They had the big splitters from last year. Uh, obviously, we always keep control of the restrictor plate that we added to it, which is a 7 8 which is the same thing we ran at Daytona Talladega already this year. And then uh, we, we had the ducks in our possession at all times. No teams got to, uh, got to do any kind of aero testing with them. Uh, we didn't let anybody buy them. Nobody could get their hands on them. Uh, we personally went to every shop in the last two months and personally put them in every car that's here at the racetrack today. So when they got here today, they bolted them right in, and we're rolling through inspection right now. We'll stay here in the back to Caleb. Caleb Whistler, Speedway. Hey, Caleb. If all the partners deem this as a success, will we potentially see this at later races this year or in 2018? Well, let's concentrate on Indianapolis right now. I mean, I think everybody knows that uh, we're, not, we're not scared to try stuff. And this, this is a big test for us, too. We did it with three race cars here at the test back in October. The results of that test definitely show that this is the right way to go. We're going to try it here for Indianapolis for the Xfinity Series. And uh, we'll take all the data back with us. We'll listen to the teams. We'll listen. To, uh, I'm going to be out here in the garage uh, out here in this heat this weekend, which I could probably stand and sweat a little bit. But uh, we will uh, be out here in the garage, listen to the drivers, and see what they tell us about the package. See if we made any adjustments before tomorrow. But we feel real confident that uh, the information, the teams were very much instrumental in this package getting here to Indianapolis. So they were all in. Let's let's try something. So uh, we're pretty pleased with what. Um, no, we're not. We are pleased with the package that we're bringing here this week to put on a great race. We'll go back to Jim. And then the Jim Hunter, I think this is what you said, but just to clarify, so basically this entire package for teams is was cost neutral is that correct that's that's correct the only thing the teams had to do there were some uh, support bar support bumper bars they had to move so that we could get all the way into we wanted the break we wanted the aero ducts put in the same location they're 15 inches left and right of uh, the uh, center of the car uh, 30 inches apart we gave the teams a template we bought the templates for them we paid for the ducts ourselves. We provided all the bolts that it took to install them in the car, and we supplied the sealant. We, the, a lot of questions came up. Can we add silicone? No. Here's the sealant you can use, and that way everybody's got the same stuff, uh, same items in their car, and nobody had any expense to it at all. We, we paid for the full bill of it, other than they just had to prepare their car for it. And because of that, do you believe that was why it was one of the reasons why it was so well accepted uh, as a experiment uh, uh, willingness by everyone to participate I, th 
I really believe that uh, the reason the team's bought into it is, is we all know that uh, we're trying to make the best racing that we can here on the racetrack. And I think this is one of them that everybody sort of circles every year. Let's see what we can do to improve the racing at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It's a great racetrack. Everybody loves being here. Uh, you know, we, we played in a Chevy golf tournament yesterday, and everybody said, man, what a beautiful place for a great racetrack. And it is. I mean, you look in here and just the history of this racetrack, and everybody in the Xfinity garage wants the race. But we also want to know that we need to put uh, – put the great racing on the racetrack. So I think the teams bought in because they knew we were trying something new, which uh, I, I think everybody in this uh, room sitting right here knows we're not scared to do at times. And uh, this is a great package that we're going to have on these cars. We'll go to Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. A hey, couple Dustin. questions. Hey, uh, when you mentioned talking with the drivers, and then you kind of made a comment about see what adjustments be before tomorrow. So what might you look at or what could you make changes on if if you got certain feedback from drivers can you kind of clarify that a little bit first of all please yeah I th what what we do is any any racetrack we go to uh you know we've we've tried some uh ingredients on the racetracks uh here lately uh goodyear brings a great race tire to the racetrack for us each and every week and, and our feedback that we get from the drivers we may spread through the garage area and say hey have you tried this because the one thing that I'm very proud of as far as Xfinity Series is, it, it's, a, it's a, co a collaboration amongst all the teams to make sure that we put on the best race that we can. So if a, if a team finds something, then they want us to tell the other teams, they're going to beat them. They're not going to tell them everything, but, they, but uh, they will give us some information that if we need to maybe adjust our shock package or something, which is the teams can adjust on the fly on. But, uh, you know, that's just one of the items that's on the car that maybe we look at and we spread through the garage area because everybody wants this package to work. No, we're we're not adjusting any of the ingredients we put on the car. The splitter is done. I mean, you just don't build those things overnight. The aero ducts definitely. It took us. Uh, we got the last ones in on uh, Tuesday, I believe it was, to get them loaded up to bring up to uh, Indianapolis. The rear spoiler. Uh, you know, there is one adjustment we could do there, but I don't see us doing it. I just bring it up that because of collaboration at the garage area, there may be some things that the drivers tell us, hey, this may help the race a little bit more, and we float it through the garage area. If it's an easy change, we can do it. If it's something that we need to decide on for future races or coming back to any next year, that's, that's where I was going with that. And also uh, wanted to ask you just about, I know you've got to take the information back and study it after the race, but obviously there will be... How will you look at take your first look at the race to kind of get a, an initial gauge of success or type of success, and, and what will you be looking at? What how will you look at measuring it immediately after the race, and then days after? I I don't know any way that you could sit here right now and say is this going to be a success or is it something that we need to adjust to it? I just elaborated on about excuse me uh, driving the cars, um, but I think our we will take all the data that we can back with us. We'll listen to the drivers. We'll listen to the teams. We'll look at uh, the times we turn on the racetrack. We'll talk to Goodyear. We'll talk to all the parties involved. Is it uh, something that we adjust later? It could be. Uh, it's going to be hard to say if this is a, a very successful race or not. I think we'll listen to our fans and see what they think about it. But uh, we're very excited about it. I, can, I tell you what, it's been a been a while since I've been excited about getting to a racetrack with something new to try it because with three cars uh, that we had up here in October it was definitely a big improvement from what me sitting in my seat I've seen here in years past and uh, we feel confident that and when we get 40 of them out there it's you, you always know it's going to be a little bit different uh, it's probably not going to be exactly what you saw uh, whenever you hear it with tests with three cars we're hoping it's going to be better than what we saw with three cars here at the test any additional questions for Wayne? Oh, Dustin's got one more. Keep it up, Dustin. That's all right. Uh, Wayne, I have on, an, on another subject is looking at this season. Obviously, this is the first year with limitations on cup drivers, uh, five years or more. You can only do 10 races. Uh, and then I know with the, the playoffs, they're, they're limited, and, and, and even the younger guys. Mm -hmm. So far this season, uh, you've had four regular drivers win, even with this rules package. Uh, three of the four dash for cash races where the veterans were not allowed, were still won by cup drivers. Um, 
when you start to look at that, and especially the dash for cash races, where I know you guys still want to promote the, the series regulars, and they were won by cup guys, how do you look at the success of, of this rule, and is it something that I think there's been some talk about uh, maybe limiting all cup drivers to five races, Xfinity races next year. How likely is that to, to, to take place? Well, le let me start off the, the answering it this way, Dustin. When a, when a driver comes into the NASCAR Xfinity Series, he's a competitor, or she is a competitor. I don't care which series they come from. They are a competitor when they come in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, and that's the way we need to treat it. Uh, as far as uh, you know, going forward, we have been in talks with teams about even limiting the, uh, the number of races more uh, or stay where we're at. Those uh, conversations are ongoing, and uh, stay tuned. Uh, yeah, I think some announcements will be coming, Tom, out here uh, pretty soon about what the, uh, the garage area has asked us to look at. Uh, but if you talk to an Xfinity driver, they love for cup drivers and truck drivers to come into the series. I mean, you look at the talent that's in this garage area this year, I'm telling you what, if anybody had not been paying attention, there is, uh, NASCAR racing is set for a long time with the talent that we've got in our Camping World Truck Series and our NASCAR Xfinity Series with the young guns that are out there. But then you got the old Wiley vet veterans that want to kick the, uh, the little one's uh, tail on the racetrack. But, um, you know, there's limitations that uh, we set forth this year. I think everybody accepted them. Uh, but uh, when they come into the garage area, the seat that I sit in, I got to look at them as a competitor. We, we want to make sure that we have 40 cars on the racetrack every week and we have 40 competitive cars on the racetrack every week. Um, I'm very proud of the way that our Xfinity drivers have held up this year. Uh, have they won as many races as the other series of drivers that's been in it has? No, they haven't. But I'm going to tell you what, you can't go from lack of effort because they are really driving their, driving their cars really hard this year to make sure that they can go get that uh, championship that the, and Homestead and get in those playoffs and then get down to Homestead and win that championship this year. Well, the, poss the possibility of our young guns winning races every week is there every race we go to. I mean, we've, we've seen a couple drivers come in, some JGR cars, uh, that have absolutely shined this year at the races that they've been at. Uh, you know, you can't take anything away from uh, Christopher Bell when he's got into JGR cars this year. Uh, look at Ryan Priest last week, you know, the effort that he had in New Hampshire. You look at uh, uh, the... The other kids that's been in the, in the garage area for a few races, but you also look at the kids who are in the garage every week. William Byron, I mean, this kid is phenomenal. You know, Daniel, Daniel Hamrick's done a heck of a job this year. Uh, Tyler Reddick's done a heck of a job when he's in that 42 car. Spencer Gallagher's starting to, to really start coming to the front. You know, all of our rookies this year have just absolutely just been, uh, I, I think that they have already grown since we left Daytona to this race that we are uh, at this time of the season. I, I know which one you're referring to, but I'm going to say it again. <laughs> they're competitors when they come in our garage area, and that's the way they're going to get treated. Uh, but there, there are a lot of talks that's going on right now in between uh, our uh, folks at NASCAR, including myself, uh, being involved in it, and the owners. So we, we, get, we want to have 40 race cars in the racetrack every week, and uh, that's our main goal. Hmm? Wayne, thank you. We look forward to seeing these guys on track here pretty soon. Thanks for what all of you do, and uh, hopefully uh, – Knock on wood, I feel very confident everybody's going to see a great race here tomorrow. If I can have your attention here in the media center, we'll continue on with today's uh, media availability for Sunday's Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series, Brantley Gilbert Big Machine Brickyard 400. And we're joined by Joey Gase, driver of the number 15, Lisa Calagrasi Foundation Chevrolet. Joey? You have some guests with you on stage here today. Would you please uh, introduce us to, to your special guest that you have here? Yes, sir. We got uh, Todd Crawford up here, and uh, he's the founder of the Lisa Foundation, and uh, he's the husband of, of Lisa, who's the reason why we're all here today. And then uh, we have Conrad's family up here as well, mom and dad, and uh, they're, they're a big part of this as well. And, uh, and I'll let them share his story with you as well. Good deal. And uh, <coughs> just talk about 
talk about the, the you know the special paint scheme that you have going on and and what is all involved with that. Yeah, this uh, weekend we're teaming up with the Lisa Foundation, and uh, for you, for those of you who don't know what that's about, um, our mission this weekend is to uh, raise awareness for uh, brain aneurysms. Uh, my mom passed away in April 2011 of uh, sudden brain aneurysm, and uh, at that time I didn't really know a lot about brain aneurysms, and I feel like that's how a lot of people are still today, unfortunately, and uh, brain aneurysms is a, a silent disease, unfortunately, that uh, sneaks up and takes a lot of people's lives. Um, it's something that you can be perfectly healthy and have no issues at all, like uh, like my mom was, and it just comes out of comes out of nowhere, unfortunately. Um, there are there are warning signs that can come with those, and uh, that's why we're here today, trying to get those warning signs out there to get people not to uh, ignore them and to go get help. Todd, could you speak about just how special it is to be involved with Joey and, and, and honoring the rulings on the car? Yeah, well, um, the foundation was named after my wife, Lisa Colagrassi, who was a w very well-known <coughs> television journalist for ABC News. And um, I first spoke with Matt uh, doing a lot of research after I initially launched the foundation and um, ran across Joey's story. Um, about one o'clock in the morning and I called Matt the next day and said I'm trying to get a hold of Joey Gase and we connected and the first thing that one of the things that Joey said is I remember your wife's story he said I um, um, I dropped to my knees and cried for about 10 minutes out at Fontana Speedway when I heard the story about her passing so um, we had an instant connection with one another this is a this is a really special kid uh, I think he's one of the biggest untapped opportunities in the sport. Um, and um, Conrad's parents, Mary and Ralph, Conrad was a former NFL player who died in December and whose heart and kidney were donated to Major League Baseball legend Rod Carew. And their story, Conrad's story, has been featured by HBO Real Sports a couple nights ago. and. CBS Evening News and a bunch of others and um, so this is kind of like the trifecta uh, and, the, and the tie that binds is is uh, brain aneurysm and um, I used to work uh, for the Indy Racing League and I know the power of motorsports I know firsthand the power of NASCAR and this is the best platform for us to do this uh, this is where the unscripted drama of NASCAR converges with the unscripted drama and tragedy of real life uh, on this car this weekend to raise awareness for brain aneurysms and educate the public about the warning signs uh, and what to do and, um, and to try and help save lives. So we're just a um, very powerful story, I think, and we're just uh, honored to be here. Ralph and Mary, it's a you know, very trying time you know, that you, you, you've been through. But how important is it to keep Conrad's story alive and, and, and really and, and really share that with people using using Joey and, and the race car? Well, we're very honored to be here and honored by Joey and Todd to include us in this with the Lisa Foundation. Um, it's very important. Um, Conrad did everything right. He did go to the hospital at the first sign of a click or whatever. So he did do everything right. And in his case, he just wasn't going to be saved. Um, but in the most cases, you could be saved. And if you get that worst headache of your life and you've got to go get it checked out, I mean, it's important to raise awareness to the signs and symptoms of a brain aneurysm because I know in Todd's case, Lisa left behind a wonderful husband and two beautiful young men. And in Joey's case, he lost his mother, which is a hard thing to do. We lost our son, and he had brothers, and you know, it's, it's, it, it doesn't have to, to be that way. If you can find a way to save lives, this is what we want to do, and we're honored to be here to be a part of all of this. We'll open the floor for questions. If you have anybody has a question, we'll get a wireless microphone to you. Start here. Does this brain uh, situation, concussions, is this part of it, or is this totally separate from concussion? Uh, we're, it's something people are still learning about. Um, for the most part right now, it's it's genetic, 
and uh, it, it can run in the family. And there, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot you can do to prevent them right now. Um, you can get scanned, and if they catch it in the scan, they can go in and fix the brain aneurysm before it's ruptured. So that's one of the biggest things we're trying to get get people to do, and Todd can explain it a little bit more. There, there is a familial and, and genetic component to it. Um, there are many who have uh, suffered and died from brain aneurysms that had no family history whatsoever. So um, there's not a, there's, there's more that is not known about the condition than is known, to be honest with you. Um, but if, if, if you have one, it could be life-threatening. There are many who live with a brain aneurysm, never know it, and live a very full life and active life. Um, you know, but our job, um, there are options and choices. Our job is to basically inform the public and educate them about brain aneurysms. The Lisa Foundation is the first foundation to ever directly communicate and educate the public. And, and you know, in our short 22-month history, we've been thankfully credited with saving a number of lives around the world. Um, you know, through our awareness efforts. One thing I wanted to add, I just thought of this actually just a second. When Conrad was in the hospital and he was, um, it hadn't burst for four days, so we had four days with him before it actually burst. They asked us if Conrad had any kidney issues or if anybody in the family had any kidney issues. And I said, well, yes, you know, we've got some kidney disease in our side of the family. I just actually just thought of this. And I guess there's a correlation between possibly brain aneurysms and kidney disease. Is this true? You're the doctor. Yeah, I am, I am a physician, and uh, there is a association. Those with polycystic uh, kidney uh, disorder are at increased risk for brain aneurysms, so keep that in mind if anybody in the family has history of uh, kidney cysts. You might want to get that checked out just to rule out having that aneurysm. Um, but yeah, it affects all ages, both sexes. Uh, females more than males, but uh, children have brain aneurysms, die from them, as well as middle-aged and older folks. So uh, nobody's really spared, and it's really not related to trauma and things like that. It's uh, like, like they were saying, genetic and family history plays a role too, but a lot of times there is no history of any of that, and they just sporadically occur. And basically, it's a weakness in the vessel wall in the brain, and just like an inner tube that you're overinflating, it kind of bulges, gets a, a thin spot, and then when it ruptures, you're in trouble. So the main thing is uh, knowing the signs of sy and symptoms of, of brain aneurysms. A lot of times you'll get a really bad headache. And if you ever have that worst headache that you've ever had, you better get it checked out because that's one of the things that uh, is commonly known uh, to have happened prior. And if you can get to uh, get help and uh, get it diagnosed and do something with it surgically before it ruptures, then you've got a chance. And once it ruptures, it's, it's pretty much uh, hopeless at that point, but, um, and some of them are easier to treat depending on the location and the character of the aneurysm. Uh, they go in and they put like a little coil in there, they clip it off and you're good to go and you're cured with no residual problems. In some cases, in a, it's in a bad spot where any procedure uh, would be very difficult to save anyone. Um, and unfortunately, our son was in that case. He had a bad type of aneurysm in the worst place and we, it, was just, it was just a very tough situation, even though you know, he got help. And, but many, like I say, many uh, of the cases, um, they are curable, and it's all about time. And so people need to be educated on those signs and symptoms and to act appropriately. Have you, have you seen the car? No, we haven't Not seen yet. it yet. I'm Not very yet. excited to see it, though. This yes. is, that's a surprise. I think it's a... Later. I, just I might hope. get a little weepy. That's going to be a tough one. I was going to say, that's I mean, that, that's what goes to your mind when you see the car. I, yeah. I, I'd love and to know what your thoughts were. because Kind of brings it all to life, uh, you know, and it? makes it real. Yeah, it's going to be tough tomorrow. Um, you see it tomorrow or you'll see it today? Tomorrow. Uh, the, tomorrow. the garage, the Cup Series garage isn't open until uh, tomorrow morning. Okay, so tomorrow morning. Yeah. Yeah. You're looking forward to it, though. Yeah, I want to see it. I really do. I'm looking forward to seeing it. And... Uh, I don't know what sort of emotion I'm going to have, but I guess I'm going to find out. My word through this whole thing has been bittersweet, and that's basically what I think is going to be sweet in a lot of ways, but bitter, knowing the reason that he's on that car, but also honored that he is. So kind of everything mixed in one bag. 
Yeah, welcome to Indy too, because I he was a Colt for a, a short time. Yes, he time. was. Yeah, this I was his last team. I covered the Colt team. for 20 years, and I I don't remember talking to him. I apologize, but I know he was here. So that was uh, his last team, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, how unique! You're not just driving for you, are you, Joey? No, no, we're not. Mom, wife, son. I mean, that's I don't know what's more inspiring. Yeah, uh, that's that's right. We uh, we're driving for uh, anyone that's affected by a brain aneurysm, either them themselves or or their family member, and uh, we're also going to have uh, about 40 remedies on the car as well, with names on it as well. Which, which includes, by the way, some very notable names who've yeah. been affected firsthand by this. Mario Batali, celebrity chef, who's a survivor, has bought an awareness ribbon on the car and supporting our foundation. Uh, Taylor Gabriel, wide receiver for the Atlanta Falcons, who played in the Super Bowl, whose mom yeah. died when he was 16. T.J. Jones from the Detroit Lions, whose father died um, and played and won a national championship at Notre Dame and, and some others. What would your mom say? Uh, I think she'd say just keep up the, the good work and uh, thank you for keeping my legacy alive and uh, doing as much as we can to uh, to help others. She'd be proud of you. I think so. I hope so. That's my goal. Do we have additional questions? Additional questions? I have one other. Uh, between the symptoms and the demise, how much time is there and how, how do you determine a situation well it's variable it's variable you know it's uh, comes down to you know the, the rupture is the is the big event so if you can get help before there's a rupture occurring then you've got a, a decent chance of making it and if it's in a good location then uh, like I said it can be totally fixed and there's no issue with that so uh, but it's a variable thing in terms of you know how much time do you have once you start having the headache until you have to get it fixed it, it it, you can't answer that question because it's, so, it's so unique. But we did have three to four days before it did rupture in our case. But uh, like I said, every case is so different. And that's one of the reasons we're here this weekend. Is be, This is a very big problem in the U.S. It affects as many as 15 million people. That's one out of every 25 people. And not, every, not anybody knows about it. That's what the Lisa Foundation um, was founded based on you know, creating awareness and educating the public as to the prevalency and the issue. And uh, the NASCAR, NASCAR platform is, is tremendous and gives us that opportunity to get in front of a lot of eyeballs um, with a very, very, very special uh, and powerful connection. December for your son, right? Yeah, he went in two days after Thanksgiving. Excuse me? He went into the hospital with it two days after Thanksgiving. Okay. And they and when was your yeah. wife? March 2015. So how much does this help in the healing process, if at all? It's a double-edged sword, honestly. Um, what we're going through uh, is gut-wrenching, and you, it, it is a struggle each and every day. Uh, something like this does help because you, you, it brings them back, and, and, and there you feel them with you through this weekend. But um, it also resurrects a lot of the memories that we can never have again in the void, which is extremely painful. I'm trying to respect the grief, but I, you have to ask. Well, it's a great question. question. No, we appreciate that. Well, Joey, Todd, Ralph, Mary, <coughs> really appreciate you taking the time. I know I learned a lot today. Uh, Joey, good luck this weekend. I know you're going to be racing with a lot on the line. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. We're going to go ahead and uh, start our media availability for the NASCAR Xfinity Series, joined by uh, three drivers who are making a name for themselves in the Xfinity Series. We have William Byron, Dakota Armstrong, and Ryan Reed. Uh, William, you've had quite a, quite a stretch here coming through. Please walk us through the success that you've had of late, and what's been the what's been the uh, cause of that success? Uh, I think it's just good race cars and um, we've had a, a good stretch of races for us and our cars seem to to perform well at some of those racetracks that we've been to lately so uh, it's good for us I think our team's starting to to uh, put solid races together and good strategy and everything so um, I think we're hopefully building that um, success and speed for the playoffs at the end of the year and 
um, hopefully just continue to have this stretch and, and keep it going. Dakota, this is your home track. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, what's it like for you to be uh, back home and uh, racing in front of the hometown? Thing? Yeah, you know, it's always cool. I, I'm probably a little biased, but every time I come here, I think the atmosphere is just a little different. You know, everyone knows it's a big venue and a big track that everyone wants to run well. So uh, get to meet a lot of family here again. So always that added pressure to do well here. So hopefully we'll, uh, we can go out there and, and perform this week. Ryan, uh, Lily Diabetes, the, the entitlement sponsor for the race, also on your car. You ha you're a pretty busy guy, so you're out <laughs> karting yesterday. You've got a lot going on. How how's that been for you? Uh, it's awesome. Yeah, I think Lily puts a lot of effort into uh, the, the entire NASCAR program, and you know, obviously, to see them in our fourth year of our partnership is pretty amazing, and to see their continued addition to to our program with different NASCAR programs and their sponsorship of this race. And then the whole the whole week long activation here uh, is is really cool. Uh, we've yeah go kart racing yesterday with some fans. Uh, got to meet a lot of uh, a lot of cool fans out there yesterday, and it's a little bit unique because you actually get to race with them. You know, I, I said it a few times yesterday, but you know, and meet a football player. You don't usually get to meet a football player and and play football with them uh, two days before they're they're competing. So I think that's a pretty pretty cool way to interact with them. Uh, and then yeah, we have a Lily block party tonight, and so. A ton of the, the Lily family comes out, see a lot of red shirts, and then a lot of race fans as well. And then uh, get to actually do my job uh, on Saturday afternoon and, and drive the race car. Okay, we'll open the floor for questions. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll start with Zach and go to Caleb. Zach Tins, already Fun Stretch. Uh, racing on Indy is usually pressure enough for any driver, but now we're debuting the new uh, aero package for you guys. So for all three of you guys, you know, what's the mindset like coming into this race? Is there a little bit added pressure? You know, what, are you, what are you looking for in this practice then in the race? Um, I think just probably just looking to see what the difference in speed is from last year. Um, it's probably going to be a pretty big difference by yourself. But I feel like um, nobody really knows what to expect. It's going to be kind of an equal playing field, which is good for especially the Xfinity regulars, I think. So um, hopefully it's a good race. I th it's probably going to open up some passing opportunities, and that's going to be exciting. Dakota, your thoughts? Yeah, you know, I'd say the same thing. A lot of people just don't really know. Um, you can you can kind of speculate, but until we actually get out there and, and run, um, you know, we, we don't really know what it's going to be like in, in bigger packs or um, really even in smaller ones or by yourself. So uh, we'll see. I, I think it's it's exciting. So I think there's going to be a lot of you know hype behind it, and that it, it's a good. I think it's a good idea to to attack it and try to bring a different you know uh, race kind of to this track. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Right. Uh, we tested it end of last year, uh, me and two other drivers. So one of three, and it was definitely a huge, drastic difference, uh, like five seconds difference in speed. So I think that'll that gap will shrink a little bit as you know everyone puts a little more R and D into the package. Uh, but we it was very very different, uh, and I think that it's going to be pack style racing. You know I, I don't think it'll be quite like Daytona Talladega, uh, just with you know this place being as flat as it is. But I I think. And it's kind of a guessing game because there's only three of us. So, you know, you don't really kind of, to their point, you don't really know what's going to happen until you get out there with, you know, 38, 39 other guys. But ultimately, I, if I had to guess right now, I would kind of think that it would be similar to what you see um, uh, during the Indy race here with Indy cars. You know, you might you might see four or five guys break away, but that's the leader's not going to be able to get away. You're punching too big of a hole in the air. Um, and then with the, with the times, you know, the time difference is much slower as it is. Um, you know, you, the balance is good enough to where you can you can suck up pretty easy. So, it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting. Uh, you know, I think you're gonna see mixed bag reviews, but I think the fans are gonna enjoy it. Were you lifting in the corners? Do you know? No, definitely not by yourself. Uh, and then you know, when you were in the draft, if you got a little bit of you know, if you got you know all the way in their dirty air, if you didn't have a fender poked out, you really had to do a good job of making sure you got some air on the car. Uh, but for the most part, you were wide open no matter what situation you're in. But that was three cars. When you're in a pack with 20, 30 other guys, then I think the balance is going to be a premium. We're going to go to Caleb, then to Reed, then to Jordan, then to Jerry. Caleb with Star Speedway Dodgers. Could you guys just assess your season so far up to this point and how you, are you going to prepare going forward to the playoffs? Um, I think it's been pretty good so far. Um, you know, we probably just – Going into playoffs, just keep learning and, and um, adapt for the road courses. And definitely the road courses has been kind of our, our thing that we're focusing on, or at least I am, uh, preparing during the week and stuff. But, you know, coming here is a special thing for me. So it's 
cool to kind of check this one off the list and, and be able to make laps at Indy. So excited about that. Just kind of focus on this weekend and then trying to progress throughout the year. Yeah, for us, I mean, it, it's week to week. We, you know, we're in a spot, and you know, I think we're tenth right now, where we have to make sure we're capitalized on everything we do. You know, we're not locked in uh, yet, so we have to. Every point matters. Um, you know, everything we we do is, is important. We had a you know a little bit of a bad week last week, losing breaks. So uh, we've done a good job of just finishing every race. We haven't had any DNFs, but uh, we still have to kind of tidy up and and continue to do what we were doing. That kind of gained us all those points. Uh, in this last couple of weeks. So we just got to just keep going out there, uh, doing our jobs, and then, you know, be good in the stretch till the playoff starts. Yeah, I'd say we've, we've kind of had up and downs, uh, obviously great moments, winter Daytona. You know, we've had top five runs, top ten runs, and then we've had some, some not so good runs, and, you know, we've had some bad luck, some wrecks, and then some races where we definitely need to continue to find speed. But I think overall you've seen Roush Fenway uh, as an organization get a lot better. We've cer certainly reaped those rewards uh, on, on Saturdays. But we need to um, get in a little, little more better rhythm, get find some consistency. You know, the top ten weeks need to be, you know, two, three, four weeks in a row. Uh, the road courses are great, great summer stretch for us. We have really good road course cars. Um, you know, we had some great runs last year, top five at uh, Road America, uh, top ten at Watkins Glen, and so we need to we need to continue that uh, at the road courses. And then I think our short track program is where we have the most work to do. So if we can uh, find a little more, uh, a little more everywhere, and then kind of a lot on the short tracks. And I think we're going to be in contention uh, coming to playoffs. Reed? Uh, Reed Spencer with Desk, our wire service. When Wayne Alton was in here earlier, um, as opposed to Talladega and Daytona where you can't lock bumpers, he was saying that you guys are going to be encouraged to get as close together as possible. Um, do you anticipate that you'll be able to push each other and, uh, and that that's kind of racing maybe what we see? I mean, I don't, I don't really know, but uh, I, I guess if you can get to them, You'd either push them or put it three wide or something. So it's going to be one or the other. But I think um, as far as it goes for us at JRM, probably helping each other is going to be the best strategy. And we have four of us. So, um, you know, it seems like we worked well together on the plate races. And, um, you know, hopefully we can carry that over if that's what we need to do. But, um, yeah, it's just going to kind of be wait and see until we kind of see what practice is. Yeah, I don't I, – I doubt you can walk up all the way around uh, or anything like that. Just – I don't know if these cars could really handle that wear and tear. You know, we're not really plate racing. We're not really set up for that. But and even with the, the handling in the corners, uh, I think Ryan would have a better idea of it, as he was saying, the dirty air is important. So, uh, I, I mean, I anticipate people pushing down the straightaway for sure. I mean, that, that happens every week. Um, you know, sometimes people get run, they'll, and when you get side by side, they'll pick whichever lane they want to go faster, and they'll push that guy. So that'll happen a lot. Um, so, uh, but really, we don't really know. Um, you know, I think, if it's as slow as everyone says, there's definitely speed and just putting two cars out there and then just being right behind each other and trying to go faster down the straightaway for sure. Yeah, you're going to be able to lock bumpers. You're, you're going to be able to get to the guy in front of you, bump draft or, you know, tandem, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just once you get down in the corner, what are you going to do? You know, that's that's going to be the problem. Uh, you know, the, it's this place is so flat, you know, you, it's, you're not – you can – you can predict the same style, style of racing as Daytona and Talladega, but once you get down on the corners, balance is still going to matter. Um, and when you are tandeming, you're going to be going a lot faster. So you're going to have to respect the guy in front of you, and you're kind of at the guy. If, if someone does get to your bumper and does give you a, a, a shot, you're at his mercy. And so you're going to hope that he gives you a break once you get down on the corner. Jordan? Well, this question's for William. William, with the news this week that Alex is going to drive the 88 Cup car next week, should we presume that you're going to be in Xfinity next year full time and that your Cup plans are on hold at least for a year? Yeah, I don't know. I probably just, um, for me, just focused on this year and, and what we're doing and, um, you know, probably just see what happens this weekend. That's the biggest goal for me. So um, I don't know. I'm not sure. But uh, just keep focusing and hopefully uh, continue to try and get more wins. Jerry? Jerry Jordan, Kicking Power Center, that along those lines. Uh, your thoughts on William getting that ride? I mean, uh, on uh, yeah. Bowman getting that ride. Obviously, we're we're all thinking that it's a placeholder for you uh, at some point in, in the future. But uh, your thoughts on on Bowman taking over for uh, for now? Yeah, I think it's great. I think um, Alex has been a great teammate. Um, he's obviously helped a lot in the simulator, and that's helped me um, get time in there. And and kind of we we kind of switch roles in there sometimes when he's out testing or I'm out testing or something. So I think it's good. I think it's good that we have young guys at Hendrick and everything. And 
um, you know, we're continuing to kind of grow, and, and that's really, really great for us. So I like, um, I like him being in the car, and I think uh, it's great for us. Well, gentlemen, don't know what to expect uh, today and tomorrow, but we, we're sure you're going to put on a great show. Good luck out there, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.